hostage. You better come running. It's old Smart and Ed and his Buster Brown gang. <laughs> Midnight, the cat, Granny, the talking piano, old Froggy, the gremlin. Out here in Hollywood, all ready for another good old Saturday morning jamboree. Are we going to have big doings today? Just wait till you hear what I have to tell you a little later on. Don't you move a step away from that old radio. We have a great story for you today, too, kid. You betcha. I'm going to sing the kitty catty wampus song I am, I am. Oh, for goodness sake. Well, I guess we can stand it, Froggy, the gremlin. That's the one we put on Capitol Phonograph Records. And we're going to sing the teacher song, too, which is on the other side of the record. So let's get started here with our good old clapping song. Here we go. I know a funny little thing to do Whenever things are going wrong It's very simple, I'll explain to you If you will listen to my song When I And go like that. It always brings them. Why don't you try it to just go like this? Then go like that. Just keep on grinning and trapping away. And you keep winning, you friend, every day. Just keep on trapping. That's not a thing to say. Just go like this. Then go like that. When you need money to buy some candy sweet, just go like this. Then go like that. We'll be so funny, old dad will have to treat. Just go like this. Then go like that. When you've been cranking and mother is hot and you need spanking, now I'll tell you what. Just clap behind you and cover up this spot. Just go like this. <laughs> well, we surely clapped on that one, but believe you me, buddies, you clap when you hear what I have to say now. Oh, uh, my, so hang on to your chairs and listen hard, because I'm going to tell you about the biggest thing in Smiling Ed's whole 25 years of radio. Yes, sir, old Smiling Ed invites every single one of his buddies... Yes, and mother and dad, too, to a big celebration party I'm having all over America. It's Smiling Ed's first annual school day's jamboree at your own Buster Brown store. And boy, oh boy, does your Buster Brown shoe man have those super-duper swell elegant Buster Brown shoes for you at this big shindig of mine. I know all my buddies have been growing this summer, and most every one of you are going to need new shoes for school. Now, the biggest anniversary present you can give Smiling Ed is to make these shoes genuine Buster Brown shoes. Yes, sir, Squeaky and Froggy and Midnight and Grandy and Mr. Announcer Man and the rest of the radio gang and I have each picked out our favorite Buster Brown style. Now, your Buster Brown men will have all those styles there waiting for you. If Squeaky's a pet of yours, you be sure to see Squeaky stand out. Or if you're a fan of Froggy's, try on Froggy's favorite. We're all going to be plenty anxious to see which of our Buster Brown shoes is the most popular with my buddies. Remember, old Smiling Ed's counting on you to go back to school in Buster Brown shoes. Now, don't you disappoint me, kids. Get down to your Buster Brown shoe store today. Be one of the first of my gang to be all set for school. And now let's get into our story for today so we'll have time for the teacher song and Froggy's Crazy Kitty Catty Wompa song. Here it is. Well, kids, we've got a story today about a couple of kids who live right here in good old America. Now, how many of you kids have wanted to learn to be a detective, hmm? Oh, lots of you, I bet. Well, Jerry Martin wanted to be a detective, but he decided to do something about it. One day, full of excitement, he took his sister Judy down to the corner drugstore for a soda and to tell her some great news. Come on, Judy. Let's sit here at the fountain. All right. There. Now, for goodness 
sakes, what happened? Well, golly, it's great. The mailman came today, and what do you think he brought? I can't even guess. Well, he brought me my... Ice cream? No, not ice. Oh, uh, oh, hello, Mrs. Bemis. Hello, Mrs. Bemis. You helping Mr. Bemis today? Yes, I am. And like I always say, he certainly needs help. Now, what do you have, Judy? You, Jerry. Two chocolate ice cream sodas, Mrs. Bemis. All right. Henry! Yes, Martha? Two chocolate sodas! Hurry! Well, what happened? Well, this morning when the mailman came, I walked up to him and I said... Ain't he started them chocolate sodas yet? No! Oh, I, I mean, uh, uh, no, ma'am, uh, he hasn't. Oh, that man, that Henry, always puttering in the back room with pumpkin. If I didn't come down to this store every day or so to see what was going on, he'd never open the door to a customer. Yes, ma'am. Oh, just a second, I'll get him. Henry! Henry Bemis! Come in! Martha! We're not really in an awful hurry, Mrs. Bemis. Uh, uh, something, Martha? Only two soda customers who have been waiting fully an hour. Oh, for goodness sake, Henry, get your whisk up out of the window. Gee, Mrs. Bemis is sure mad at Mr. Bemis again today, isn't she? Oh, yeah, she always is. Well, anyway, in the mail today came my acne handy dandy sure way to become a great detective course, complete with fingerprint set and guaranteed non slip handcuffs. Jerry, honest? Uh huh. Are you a detective now? Well, I will be as soon as I read the book. I'm on page nine now. Oh, golly gee. I'll be assistant detective. Gee, we gotta hurry up and find the case so we can track the criminal. <laughs> And so Jerry Martin embarked on his brand new career, determined to be a greater detective than Sherlock Holmes. But being a super sleuth has certain problems. It was that same evening that he ran into the first one. Oh, gosh, now I really gum things up. How the dickens did I... I wonder if I... Oh, no, that won't work. Jerry, Jerry, what do you think? Now, now Judy, I'm awfully busy. Now, now please oh, don't... Oh, but inter- Jerry, you've got to listen. Oh, such news. Judy, please. I said you should never rush into a gentleman's room without knocking. You're not a gentleman. <laughs> Why are you standing so stiff and funny? What are you holding behind you? Oh, well, it's just my handcuffs. Oh, let me see them. Well, I can't. I, I put them on and I locked them. <laughs> Gee whiz, now I can't get them off because the key's in my sweater pocket and, and I can't reach it. You dope, I'll get it. But what do you think? Mr. Bean, Mr. Drugstore Man, disappeared. And they think he's been murdered. Murdered? <laughs> yes, sir. Blood spots on the sink in the back room, and all the money was taken out of the cash register. Judy, get these handcuffs off me. We're going to take this case and bust it wide open. Well, this was, of course, great news to Jerry. He felt very badly that little Mr. Bemis, the mild mannered druggist, should be in trouble. But he did want a chance to use his shiny new handcuffs on somebody besides himself. And so the kids lost no time in going to Bemis' drugstore. They were greeted by the clerk, who was quite unconcerned about the whole thing. Come on, Judy, hurry. I'm coming. Something for you kids? Huh? Oh, oh well, uh, that is, well, we're going back to pick out some comic books. Okay, but don't muss up the magazine rack. That clerk, I don't like him a bit. Now I suppose he'll be all around all the time since Mr. Bemis has been murdered, uh, killed. Disappeared. Well, Judy. Oh, Listen. Clancy. <laughs> My poor Henry. What's happened to him? I told you 19 times, Mrs. Bemis. I don't know, but I'm trying to find out. Now, when was Henry Bemis last seen? It's the police chief investigating. Listen. I'm listening. I saw Henry at lunchtime. I remember well because I talked to him all the while he ate. About how he better stir and stop and modernize his soul. I bet she talked poor Mr. Bemis to death. Oh, sh- Judy. Now, Mrs. Bemis, did Henry have any enemies? Enemies? Why, no! Henry ne- Well, wait a minute. Yes, he did. He had one. Oh, boy. Write this name down, Judy. Uh-huh. The gas man. Henry had never fixed the cellar light, and the gas meter man was always falling over a box. Oh, for gosh sake. There's no enemy. Jerry. Well, I don't think the gas man murdered Henry. Mrs. Bemis, I'm baffled. But I'll get to the bottom of this. Don't worry. Oh, come on, Judy. Let's go and hunt for clues. Okay. Find a comic book, kid? Uh, no, thanks. We read them all. Now what, Mr. Detective? Well, let's go home and eat supper and then come back. The drugstore closes early. Maybe we can find some clues. Jerry, look. Look at that little man with a long black beard. Huh? Why? What about him? Look at how he keeps looking into the drugstore. 
There's nothing wrong with that. And everybody looks in drugstore windows. But he looks so, so suspicious. Oh, he does not. Now, you're just seeing things. Let's go home. Well, Jerry and Judy ate their supper quickly, you may be sure. And at eight that evening, we're back at the drugstore. They had to conduct their investigation with speed, for they, they had to be home by 8.30. However, with all the excitement about Mr. Bemis and his strange disappearance, the drugstore was closed for the evening. They went around to the rear and peeked in the window. Then Jerry made an important discovery. Judy, this window is unlocked. Well, so what? We can't lock it. Well, no, but it's a low window, and we can open it and go in and look for clues. But that's a crime, Jerry. Oh, I know. It isn't though as we were going in to rob something. We're detectives looking for clues. Why, I'll bet we can find all sorts of fingerprints. I'm going in. Oh, come on, Jerry. Let's go home. Yeah, I guess we might as well. There's no clues here. I suppose you couldn't figure out who made all those fingerprints on the window, could you? Why, sure. I know who made those fingerprints. Really? Well, who did? Me. Oh, well, I guess we might... Judy, quick, hide under the table. Who is Jerry? Shh, you'll hear us. Gee, it's that bearded man you saw this afternoon looking in the window. I told you he was suspicious. Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, where's he gone? Out into the store. I'll bet he's going to rob the store. Let's peek. What he's doing? Gee whiz, he's dusting off the counters. Let's get out of here and wait, and then we'll follow him. And that's just what Judy and Jerry did. They waited in the alley until the small bearded man came out. Then they followed him to the suburban streetcar stop and watched him get on a car marked Tornapal Lake. And then they made a big decision. Gee, we better hurry. We'll catch it, Jerry. We're half an hour late. Yeah, but think of the swell clue we have. Tona Pauly. Well, what are you going to do about it? Well, tomorrow we'll pack a picnic lunch and go out there. And I'll bet we can find that bearded man. Oh, swell. And say, why not take Winky along? We really need a bloodhound, don't we? A bloodhound? Oh, but gosh, Judy, Winky's a cocker spaniel. Well, she's got blood in her, hasn't she? <laughs> she has, because I heard Daddy say that Winky was full-blooded, so there. <laughs> well, Jerry and Judy, like the good detectives they were, boarded a streetcar for Tonopah Lake the very next day. However, the lunch their mother packed so carefully in a big basket was later wrapped in newspaper, and Judy carried it under her arm. In the big lunch basket was Winky, the cocker spaniel, which Judy decided was a bloodhound. Yes, they were on the trail of the bearded man. Oh, gee, Jerry, I wonder if we're doing the right thing. Well, sure we are. We're going to Tonopah Lake to find the bearded man. I bet we do. Oh, Winky, hush. Oh, oh, my gosh, if the conductor comes up here. Did I hear a dog up here? What, what, a dog? Oh, no, no, that that's me. I've got a cold. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, in the basket, eh? What? I'll just raise this lid. Oh, doggone you kids, that must bit my finger. I'm putting you off at the very next stop. Oh, darn, Winky. Now we have to hike all the way around the lake to the village. Oh, well, walking along the lake shore is fun. Maybe a little while we can sit down and eat our lunch. Well, that's a swell idea. Even detectives on an important case can stop for lunch, I suppose. Yeah, I guess we got to eat it. Oh, what's that darn dog barking about? It's running behind that bush. Let's go and see. What? It's a man sleeping in the sand there. Look, he's been fishing. Yeah, sure caught some nice... Judy, it's that bearded man. Gee, Here it is. Oh, let's get away from... Winky! Oh, my gosh, he's pulling the man's hair. Oh, he's gonna... oh, 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 goodness, that goodness. Why, why it's Mr. Oh. Bemis. Oh, he was wearing a false beard. Uh, but you're dead, Mr. Beeman. Oh, oh, no. No, I'm not at all. I, 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 I just ran away from home. You? A grown man ran away from home? Oh, me. You, you children will never understand what a trial Mrs. Bemis is to me. Talk, 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 talk. 
I just ran away and went fishing. Oh, but, but, but the blood stains on the sink of the drugstore. I cut my...